And how's it going, Grey Boys? It's week three. We've got a bye after our pretty disappointing loss against Purdue. The Boilermakers uh, just kind of roughed us up and sent us packing. Now, obviously, my play could have been a little bit better, but uh, so could have some of the players on our team. We had some pretty disappointing performances across the board. But at the end of the day, I definitely got to take most of the blame for it. Uh, bye week means a lot of recruiting. So let's go ahead and see what we can get done here. We have the wide receiver Vincent Young, or Vince Young, I guess, who we are now in the lead with. So we're going to offer him a scholarship just at the chance for an insta commit. Doesn't work out, but it's obviously not going to be a waste of points because if he's on the board at this point, he's somebody that we wouldn't mind picking up anyways. Now, with the rest of our points, uh, we'll have to go through and just take points away from guys because, well, actually, most of these guys, we are still gaining on the uh, the teams that are there. Pat Burgess, this strong safety, was a pipe dream to begin with. He looks like he'll go to Michigan. Uh, but everybody else on this board, I mean, we are gaining on. So you never know. Some crazy stuff could happen with this class. It's going to be very simple. And for the most part here, uh, I don't care who we recruit, what positions we recruit, because, uh, well, we just need to fill the team with good players of any kind. So we're going for the best man possible in all of these situations, which means we'll give a bunch of points to whoever we can. And then, uh, you know, if we end up with a bunch of offensive linemen, then so be it. Maybe a couple of years down the road, we have the best offensive line in the country, and that certainly can't hurt. So, uh, easy, simple recruiting. I think that's just kind of the case, though, uh, when you're such a low overall team. We'll go ahead and advance to week four, where we'll get to play our first conference game against the Ohio Bobcats and see what we can do against teams of our own caliber. In all of that, we do get our first recruit ready for a visit, and we have a few points that we can give out. Ohio 0-2 to start the season. Very similar in overalls. We're favored to win. I gotta like our odds on that one. Bobcats start the season with a rough loss against Cincinnati. They get shut out 30 to nothing. And then oh, somehow after that go on the road to Oklahoma and put up a fight. They lose, but they put up 28 and only give up 41. Uh, certainly if you're the Sooners, you're probably worried about your season after that game. But hopefully we can uh, fall somewhere in the middle or maybe more on the Cincinnati side of this and, and just take care of business. With our little bit of recruiting, we just want to scroll through. And I think, honestly, all these guys we continue to be gaining points on, except here for Charles Robinson. We lose 40 there, uh, which is the amount of bonus points deficit that we have to the Wolverines. So Michigan seemingly going to edge us out of a lot of recruits. Also, a bunch of visits scheduled for this guard. So... He's going to have to come off the board. I don't think we're going to be able to make that one back up. As we keep going down, though, still in a good position on a lot of these recruits. Uh, we're either gaining or in a position still to be gaining with all of them. Uh, a guy like Anthony Mitchell probably comes off because he's pretty far gone. But uh, what I'm going to do is just go through, find the guys that we don't even have a chance to pick up. Maybe guys that are really, really far away already. And then we will replace them. And so I've gone ahead and added uh, seven guys to the board just to fill it up. We'll see a couple of them. Derek Bentley specifically uh, is a pipe dream. We don't expect to get him, but he could be an incredible quarterback. And he was a little bit of low lock cheese. George Smith stays at 76. Kyle Wilson goes up to a 72 overall. Dallas Miller, another athlete, goes up to 72. Tony Landry. Never mind. I don't have points to scout these guys. Uh, we're just going to wait and do it next week. The last thing I want to do is pull points away from guys that we're in battles for. So we'll just scout a couple of week, I guess, and then keep using those points for scholarships and then eventually dump them into somebody long term. Around the country, we have some interesting games that happened last week and will happen this week. Georgia and Ole Miss will play. USC beat a ranked Cal last week. Penn State and Oregon is a big out-of-conference matchup. 
Um, we've got Florida playing Tennessee as a ranked one. And I'm curious, we have big losses. Cal was at 10th before losing to USC. They take their first loss of the season. Ole Miss lost to a now number 10 Florida. Uh, Coastal lost their second game uh pretty badly 38 to 15 to alabama the teal boys start the season one and two for the first time in who knows how long back-to-back -back losses not the closest uh which is pretty disappointing at least i guess for them they were against ranked opponents and they beat arkansas but certainly not what they want although uh out of conference looks pretty good for them utep charlotte and new mexico uh their three out of conference games that they get a face off against now i'm sure they're going to be happy to get a couple of breathers before having to play georgia and how about our early season heisman watch what do we see a nebraska running back the quarterback for georgia and michigan and then running backs for auburn and georgia so georgia with a quarterback and a running back already on this list um they seem like the team to beat right now they're coming off of a season where they're disappointed that they didn't win the national championship so probably a lot of drive for these players curious to see though can Derek Moore hold them all off the senior from Omaha playing for Nebraska at 91 overall um he didn't have a good game last game but he stays at the top of the board there all right, well, let's get into this one. Ooh, almost dead even. 72 overall for both teams, both with a 70 overall offense, and they have the slight edge, a 76 defense to our 75. Uh, they also get that three-point favor just for being the home team. So uh, theoretically, we have a couple of hurdles to jump over, but I think end of the day, we're probably looking like the better team. We're going with a similar uniform set as we did in the Purdue game, but we're keeping the silver helmets on these this time. And Ohio, ah, oh, man, we uh, we finally get to see all these MAC teams updated. Let's see what alternate we're going to throw them in because we can't just let them be standard. You know what? We're going to go with this alternate four, changing things up just a little bit from their standard home, but not too much. White helmet, white pants, and the black jersey. Coming into this game, again, 0-2 for the Bobcats. They have one of the worst offenses in the country and also one of the worst defenses in the country. Uh, even saying that, they still outrank us in a couple of metrics, which is kind of disappointing. And they actually have some decent players. They must be a little bit top-heavy. The 94 overall kicker boosts that special teams, but then they've got an 85 overall defensive tackle and an 83 overall wide receiver. We're definitely going to have to watch out for Harvey on the defensive side of things. Um, none of our guys on hot streaks. You kind of hate to see that, but maybe we can start them today. Well, here we are. Beaton Stadium in the state of Ohio. Trying to get off on a good foot for our conference schedule this season we win the coin toss i think that makes us two for two on the season and we will elect to kick this ball off a very very windy day 15 mile an hour tailwind for us means that it's going to be blowing in our faces in the fourth quarter so hopefully we are not in a position where we need a game winning field goal because that would certainly hurt uh good kick allows us or the wind allows us to get a good kick they still get a decent return as Martel Green comes out to lead this offense. All right, what can the defense do? 4-2-5, I feel like it's been working pretty well. But it's always going to be up to my user to a certain extent to make sure that we're successful. An option on the first play of the game for Ohio as the quarterback keeps it. Takes a really big shot, but gets nine yards for his efforts. Wouldn't be surprised if they're a team that's big on the run as they come out in the hurry up early on this one. This one's going to be a handoff up the middle. I hit the wrong gap, and just like that, they pick up another eight and move the chains for a first down. Curious if we'll ever face uh, a team that doesn't just run the hurry up exclusively. First down, stepping back to throw on the play action. They've got a man wide open, and the quarterback missed him. Maybe a little miscommunication. That should have been a touchdown counting our lucky stars right now it should be seven nothing ohio instead it's a second and ten is again 
Put a man in motion, looking to throw, and they've got the completion to Massey. We get the tackle, take his legs out from under him, and we'll force the third down. Certainly not a fan of the fact that our only defensive stop was a miscue from the other team. Third and one quarterback scrambling, and he's going to get sacked. It's a loss of five, so the defense comes out to hold the blitz works, and they're going to be able to get off the field. See if this is a returnable punt. Hopefully they don't fake it. Definitely watching for it now. After Purdue did us dirty in the last game. This one definitely a returnable punt. But uh, Williams was... Oh no. Oh it's a touchback. Williams was dancing around and when I usered him. I accidentally got him out of the way. That's not going to help. But the offense. 80 yards of clean field in front of them to try to move the ball on their first drive. We're going to step back to throw. Throw it short to Morris on first down, and i will get a couple of extra yards there. Nine total on the play. Gray boys looking solid as we'll run it up the middle on second and one, and Durham Finch Jr. His first carry is for a loss of a yard. Good pressure from the Bobcats. Forces a third down for us. Well, one thing is certain... Big plays could go a long way in a game like this. We might be looking for one play action pass on third and two. Waiting, trying to get rid of it. Finch might have been open. I think we had somebody open over the middle, but just can't get the pass off in time. The pressure for the Bobcats just gets there way too soon. We're going to have to boot this one away. I'm going to try to cheese it past this return, man, but I'm curious with the wind if he can get under it. No, that is absolutely beautiful, but it's going to bounce into the end zone. That thing would not stop moving so it's a touchback for the bobcats it ends up being a pretty long punt but now nah, they get the ball at the 20 so that's a bit of a shame first and 10 we'll see what they can do a run another option quarterback keeps it he's gonna take another big shot but 16 yards man Th that hurts i keep selling out to stop the uh the running back and then he pulls it Gets a big chunk again. If if that was an option, he would have had a lot. Oh, gosh. Scott Walters, the running back, got 13 yards, but then got obliterated. Another first down for the Bobcats. Puts them near midfield. Man in motion, trying to bring pressure with the blitz. It's maybe a screen. Fox almost in a position to make a play on the ball, but does get the tackle for loss. Thankfully, this quarterback... Only seven yards on his two completions. It should be a whole lot more than that, but the mistake... The miscue on what should have been a touchdown helps us out quite a bit there. Second and 12. Somebody's going to be open. Another miscue. And it's third and 12. Quarterback's just not linking up with his receivers. Well, it seems like it's going to be a defensive battle today. We'll see if we can be on the upper edge. Third and 12. Can we get these guys off the field? As they shift the widers or the running back out into space lane makes the tackle and forces the fourth down but this could be go for it territory i really wish that i wasn't right but here we are again that big wind gonna take any chances of them kicking a field goal out right now option pitched away from the quarterback and we get the turnover on downs able to string that one out to the sidelines and eventually make the tackle so the defense holds again that of course is going to give the offense Great field position and a chance to be the first team to score in this game. Finch gets a couple of yards. I don't like having to run, especially not with the quarterback, but I don't know if we're going to be able to throw the ball well today, so we'll try the read option. Finch will get it. There's some blockers in front of him. Maybe not the best running from me, but we make it a third and short. And I am so curious to see if we can pick this up again. I don't know why I'm doing this. We're throwing, but it's a play action. They're bringing some pressure over the middle. There's Morris. He holds onto it. There's a flag, and this one's probably coming back. Oh, that hurts. Well, it's not as bad as a holding would have been. We just go back six yards, but we have to try and reconvert this third down, and you know that's never a given for us. Waiting, going check down, and Albert Johnson with the inaccurate throw it's gonna bring up a fourth down for us and with how well the defense has been playing i'm playing the field position battle right here trying to get this kick away hoping that they just take the fair catch and they do so we'll pin them back down to the 12 yard line and hope the defense can just continue to operate 
Switch things up a little bit defensively. We'll try a little bit of a nickel package just to see what it gives us. They're going to continue to run towards the edge. Lane can't hit the tackle. Thomas gets shoved off. Poole is run over. He holds down and brings down Walters, but gives up 11. And certainly just not what we want to see. Man in motion expecting this to be a run. It's going to be a play action pass. And Massey is wide open over there for the 12 yard catch before he goes out of bounds. Bobcat's definitely throwing in enough wrinkles to keep me guessing. We'll see if the defense can step up. I would love to create a turnover. They've already done so much for us this season. That works as well. Stopping the option, dropping it for a loss of four will work every time for me. Good news for us is that we keep getting Ohio into these difficult to convert situations. This one, second and 14 as we're nearing the end of the first quarter they'll step back to throw that corner out was wide open Massey again with a big catch this time it's 18 yards to move the sticks and in my eyes here the way that these guys are playing this is going to be a run probably an option of some sort so that's what I'm prepared for we'll see do we bring the pressure we for sure we're bringing the blitz and oh that should have been picked off both teams it seems are struggling from some bad quarterback skill sets uh, their quarterbacks just missed a couple open guys that time he almost threw a really bad pick but they lived to see another day and get themselves into another third down this hurry up not taking a lot of time off the clock this is a long first quarter for us see if they get this play off in time and they won't so we will get a chance to breathe kind of use that as a timeout get some subs in and hopefully we can come out to start this uh, second quarter with a stop defensively. Uh, Ohio moving the ball better than us, I would say, but our defense is doing enough. The offense has to figure out it something. But the way this one is going, you never know. A touchdown could be enough. Third and six to start this second quarter. They'll step back looking to throw. Somebody's got to be open. Oh my gosh, I get burned by the tight end again. It just ran on the seam. I was expecting a curl, but guessed wrong so they're starting to move they have the wind at their back now which could be real dangerous quarterback throws one up it's caught and it's into the end zone a broken tackled ronald scott good catch good fight to get into the end zone and just like that bobcats take a seven nothing lead all right well i didn't forget i didn't mess up we do get to return the first kick of both halves and well, it's probably not wise to bring it out of the end zone because I don't get the opportunity to do it much. I'm going to try it anyways. A mistake that time with Stan Williams. We failed to bring it out to the 20, but again, I'm going to go for it when I get the opportunity. First and 10, we're going to go with another play action pass. We've got a man open. It's Morris, and it just kind of seems like maybe a little battle of the tight ends today. As I say that, I don't know if Mark Morris is a tight end, but he seems to play like one in my mind, so that's what I'm going to call him. Trying to run the ball here. Finch breaks a couple of tackles. That's a big nine-yard run. So we're starting to move the ball on offense. We started this drive with just 33 yards total on the offensive side of the ball, and I think we've come close to matching that already. Stepping back again to throw, waiting, trying to get rid of it. We're lucky. Again, not to take a sack. I can definitely feel uh, the struggles for our offense. Wide receivers not really getting open often. Give it to Finch up the middle on third down. Just try to make sure that we convert there. Keep looking to throw. Feels like pressure's going to come, and it does. We have to get rid of it immediately. Finch gets the catch out in the flat, gets five yards, and I'm going to say that's a really good uh, play for what we were dealt there. They were into the backfield almost instantly. So we'll take what they give us. And just keep moving the ball. Trying to get across midfield. X is wide open. We find Mitchell. He drops the ball. Oh, that hurts. The past two games, we've had some really, really painful drops from the wide receivers. Who knows how much that one could have gone for. We'll try to be accurate. Wilson comes down with it. And anytime we go to one of the Wilsons, I can be pretty confident they'll hold on. Try to go back to the ground on this first down. Got to establish the running game more than we have been, but this Ohio defense not wanting to give it us an inch. 
So we'll see instead if we can just take one. Finch up the middle again. Tries to bounce it towards the edge. I think it's four yards, but it's third down. And again, with the wind coming at us, this is four down territory. And I'm going to try something that very well may not work. Curtis coming in motion for a little swing screen. See if the blocking from the wide receivers holds up, and it does very well. That's going to be enough to move the chains. Brian Curtis, not the fastest guy, but he had enough room to work with. I've been very impressed with some of the screens that we've been throwing so far this season. Typically, I'm not a fan of them in this game, but it's hard. Oh, it's hard not to be a fan when they work. That should have been picked off. That was just a very, very bad read for me. We're lucky to be alive. Second and 10. Try to get some positive yards here. We've got some blockers on the counter, cutting it back inside. Works again. Another third and short, this time maybe in field goal range. And I would certainly at this point be lying if I said I wouldn't take the field goal here. We need to score points uh, over midway through this second quarter, but we're going to stay alive for now. Stan Williams picks up the first down. Well, shoot, two and a half minutes left in this quarter. Maybe we start to run the ball and try to burn the clock out. We do get the ball to start that third quarter, so you never know. Durham Finch with the speed to get to the edge. That's a first and goal. Speed and power from him in that play. If you've been watching, you see our user-created players like Durham Finch, and you want that for yourself. Tier 2 members and up. You get that opportunity every season. First and goal, Stan Williams comes back in on the counter. Plenty of space up the middle, but he's not the quickest running back, so he just gets two yards there. And again, now definitely thinking about the clock. We're going to try to burn this one down as much as we can because I got to expect that we score here. A minute and 30 left on the clock. Stan gets a little bit closer. And if we get to the one-yard line, you can almost guarantee... Then we're going fullback dive. Man, they are really stacked up over the center there. Do doesn't look good for Robertson. He's going to try, and he's going to be successful anyways. Jeremy Robertson gets through the line there. Just kind of bad uh, push from Ohio there, but it works out. And we will tie this one up. Seven all, 43 seconds left in the half, but Ohio's going to get good field position. We don't have the best kicker. And we got a 15 mile an hour headwind on that kick. So a 27 yard return on a pretty shallow kick sets them up nicely. So it'll be 38 seconds and three timeouts for these guys to work with. Plenty of time, certainly if you're them, they're gonna go slip screen. We're out there. Oh my gosh, what a hit on Scott Walters. Lane, I guess, woke up and chose violence today. And I'm happy for that. Forces them to take their first time out. We don't give up any yards. We can continue to expect, expect this passing attack. Now it's going to be a handoff from Ohio. Bobcats are successful at that. That's a great, great play call when it works that well. So they take their second time out, but it gets them near midfield. And again, since they do have that tailwind, that field goal range is going to be extended quite a bit. Trying to get there. He'll step out of bounds, picking up three yards. And you got to wonder when they're going to take a shot deep. Pretty conservative play calling on this drive so far. Again, looking. This could be it. No, thrown poorly. It's intercepted by Poole. That was a terrible throw from the quarterback. But now we have 20 seconds to maybe make something happen. Somehow this defense just continues to create turnovers. Certainly I'm a fan of that. And we'll see what we can do. Probably going to throw a pick of our own, but we're just going to look to do whatever we can. We spend four seconds to get 12 yards there. And we'll follow that up with a four vert. 16 seconds. They're bringing a lot of pressure. Right bumper could be open. It's a bad throw. And that one was nearly picked off. Maybe should have gone all the way down the sidelines. Truthfully, I expected him not to go so much towards the post there, but that's just on me. Again, it looks like they want to bring pressure with the safety. So we'll keep Durham Finch as a blocker on this one. And that could be enough. You never know. Giving it the 50-50 ball. John Wilson can't get it. We give up the interception. And now they'll have five seconds to maybe throw up a Hail Mary of their own. Game clock's running down, so they're just going to run this ball. Question is, will they do anything afterwards? They get knocked out of bounds with a second on the clock. But again, 
CPU letting the play clock run down. We can almost just guarantee that this is going to be a run. Just try to prevent it from being too big. Stop him at the line of scrimmage, and we can head into the locker rooms here at halftime. Tied seven each. Uh, I don't know how to feel about that one. Felt like our offense really was struggling, but I'm happy to be tied. Defense doing an okay job. Has a turnover. Uh, just going to be a little bit gritty battling it out. Curious to know your guys' thoughts on uh, some of the play calling so far, because I don't know if it's been the best, that's for sure. Go into this second half looking to take control, and hopefully we can make this a pretty convincing victory to start off our MAC conference play this season. First return of the half. We do, do get a take, and this one should be fairly returnable. Stan Williams catches it, doesn't get any blocks, and then just gets clotheslined. Well, that's not optimal, man. We are not getting great field position on our return so far this season. Try a triple option, see if that gives us anything to work with. And oh, this could be beautiful. The pitch out to Durham Finch. He's got blockers and he's got speed. And just like that to start this third quarter, Durham Finch is going to take it to the house on the triple option. And we're going to take a big one touchdown lead just like that. Lightning has struck and the Juco transfer is found Pater today. Just like that, 14-7. And now it's time for the defense to get back to work. Try to put this kick deep, but give it a lot of hang time so our guys can get down there. We'll see, can we keep them inside the 25? No, just not getting a good, uh, I don't know. We're not doing good on special teams. All right, defense, we're bringing pressure on first down, maybe expecting an option out towards the edge from these guys. Jam them up at the line. It is a run towards the edge. Thomas, that's just a bad dive from me. And they're going to answer us right back. Just like that, big plays from both offenses to open up the half. Oh, right when we get a big play, we give up one of our own, and Ohio ties it right back up. Don't worry. I did remember to sim this one. We'll see. Maybe the AI can return a kick better than I can. Field it at the second. And, well, yeah, I think already they made it out further than I ever did. So we'll be starting with decent field position on this one. Well, the screen game has been working pretty well for us. Let's see if the offense can do it. Give it back to Durham on the mid screen. Nah, that one felt a little bit weird. He didn't get far enough downfield. Well, screw it. If they can't stop it once, maybe they can't stop it twice. We're going to try that triple option once again. And once again, the results could be similar, but they won't be. Oh, too many black jerseys in the area. Just couldn't get Finch in open space there. Well, that quickly brings up a third and ten. Experimenting a little bit with the offense does not work in our favor that time. And we'll have to hope for the best here. Stepping back to throw. Zach Wilson held on to that one through the contact. Got lucky on that play. So maybe one of the better players on this offense bailing me out on that risky throw, but it keeps uh, the offense on the field and allows us to march towards midfield some more. All right, second and five. They want to bring pressure. I called the play action. We're going to check out of that real quick. Give the ball to Morris, and that'll get us to midfield. Curious. What's it going to take to win this game? The way that we've been playing has been nice. Maybe we just continue to feed the ball to Durham. And maybe I can just self-sabotage a little bit here. We got an interesting playoff. Probably not legal. We're going to try it anyways. Uh, <laughs> going to try to hand the ball off to an offensive lineman here on first down. And we'll see what he can do. Big boy, Ray. Well, he got a yard. Honestly, that's better than uh, any other time I've tried to run that one. If he could have just broken the tackle of the linebacker, he had a lot of space in front of him. Number 69 with one yard on the game, though. I'm sure he'll be happy about that one. Waiting to make the timing throw, and it's just a bad throw from Albert. Oh, and the momentum is gone. Second interception of the game. I maybe threw that one a little bit too early, but not placed in a great spot. 9-17 for Johnson. We were in such a good position. If we were just going to be trading scores, but now 
Definitely in the danger zone is this one, a broken tackle. That one could have been real dangerous. Pool with a, maybe a touchdown saving tackle there. Cody Massey, that's his sixth catch of the game for nearly 100 yards as they continue to target him, and it's working real well. And this one, oh, so close to being picked off. Good swat away. It'll be second and 10. As we'll try to look for some pressure expecting the run. They won't do that. Instead, it's a throw, and I'm lucky they went to Fox. If they waited a second, they had a guy open over the middle. Instead, they lose some yards, and now it's third and 11. They have one third down conversion on the day, so odds are definitely in our favor. This one's a screen. A little bit late to react to it, but we do get the tackle, and we'll force that fourth and seven. It's going to bring the punt team out onto the field. Stan Williams back to return. We might have to change some things up. I'm not a huge fan of him as a return man, but I guess we'll see how it goes. Again, struggling to get under the ball. He's got a couple of blocks, and it's just not quite enough. Still nine yards on the return is better than nothing. I'm really tempted for some reason to continue to try to pass, but I've talked myself out of it. We'll hand it off on first down. Seems like a solid decision. We'll move the ball five yards. And oh no, that could be big. I thought it was maybe us and Durham Finch getting injured, but it is a Bobcat player down on that play. And if it cuts to that cutscene, you know it's probably pretty serious. They want to bring pressure. This could be problematic. Uh, we are in the Wildcat, by the way. Thought that the trickeration was going to work, but they're bringing the pressure. Jet Sweep will hand it off to Wilson. If he can get towards the edge, maybe we would have had something, but the game lagged out on me there at a very crucial time. Thought we could have caught him off guard, but it just doesn't quite work, so... Brings up another third down, stepping back, waiting, looking for Finch. Another bad throw from Albert. We'll have to punt the ball away. Wind at our back, trying to get a decent punt off. Caught. Wow. That was a really risky grab from Brad Christensen, but he does a good job holding on to it. And they take over with great field position. It'll be their own 41-yard line to start this drive as we are inside one minute left. On the third quarter, trying to run it out towards the edge. This has worked well for him today, but Carter makes a good stop there. We thankfully only give up two yards on the play. As this one again looking like it's going to be a run. Whitfield has his tackle broken, but it's enough to slow down Scott Walters. So he only gets four. <laughs> and I don't know what happened with my voice there, but it's going to be the end of the third quarter. 14 all as we head into the fourth. Uh, the only thing that happened was two really big plays at the start of the quarter. Um, who's going to score first in the fourth quarter? I think that might decide who wins. Got to ask you guys at the start of this quarter, if you're enjoying the video, please feel free to hit the like button. Certainly helps the channel out. And this one intercepted. Poole gets his second of the day. He's got some speed and he gets a good return. So who might score first? It could be us. And it could be enough. Corey Poole having a phenomenal day so far today. Ah! We haven't had a big glitch with OBS in a while, but somehow the recording stopped right after the interception. As you can see, down at the bottom, it's first and goal. We've been moving the ball well. We had a big pass play, and we just went for it on fourth and inches. The fullback dive up the middle was enough to convert. Uh, thankfully, you guys only missed a couple of plays, but man, that is really, really frustrating. So we come back out now that you guys are back with us. Two minutes of game time later. Not too many plays, though. And we'll try to run it with Stan Williams. And we'll see what we can do is... Well, we try to run it and we lose a yard. Second and goal... Well, we might try to use Albert's legs a little bit here. Expecting him to run, he will get the opportunity, and he's going to lose yards. They brought pressure, and it worked so well there. A loss of three. It's third and long now. Third and goal from the 11. I got to go to the play that's been working so well for us this season. The mid-screen to John Wilson. And that one's going to be well short. I think if I wait another second, maybe that could be a touchdown. Instead, it's fourth and goal. And Ohio takes a timeout there. 
Well, this could be a controversial decision, so I'm curious to know in the comments what you guys would do here, but I'm going to try to settle for the field goal. I know only 2.16 left on the clock, but we got to take the lead in this situation and hope that our defense can continue to play as well as they have been. Kick easily makes it through, and now we'll have to kick it away to Ohio. And again, they're going to get good field position. That huge headwind has been a major factor. Thank goodness our gunners got down there real early. So with 2.10 left on the clock and two timeouts for the Bobcats, what can they do? Curious if they're going to be comfortable running the football with this little clock left. And yeah, they will hand it off on first down. That's just going to get them back to the line. They've really been running to the edges today and thankfully we're able to stop them that time. Second and 10, this looks like it's going to be a counter and well, Scott just kind of looked a little indecisive. We're going to drop him for a loss. This could be the game on the line. Third and 11, a minute and 30 left on the clock. They have to go for this. Can we get this stop? We know they'll be going to the air. We just can't give up anything too big. And over the middle, they go. Oh my gosh, to Ronald Scott. That's a clutch catch. Huge play as the Ohio fans are going nuts here. First and 10 nearing midfield. The field goal keeps them alive, but certainly they want a touchdown. This one caught. Wow. Barely got a foot in bounds. It's a huge play for him. 18 yards downfield. The refs aren't going to take a look at it. And you know what? I think that we're going to... Oh, I want to challenge it so badly, but I think that we need our timeouts. Uh, let's take a look, though, just to see. Would a challenge have been successful? Obviously, this game can be a little bit glitchy, and I can certainly say I am glad that I held on to that challenge because by the thinnest of margins, that is a catch. They snap the ball here. First down. Could have been picked off. Fox gets bamboozled. Oh, no. That hurts. 31 yards and it's first and goal. Gotta be honest, didn't quite realize that when I unpaused the game, the play would be already going. First and goal just like that. Kind of expecting a run. It's an option. Quarterback keeps it. He takes a shot and loses some yards. And they take a timeout. I am thankful they decided to take the timeout because we're in a spot now where I'm going to start taking our timeouts. Uh, we need as much time as possible because I have to assume they're going to score. Quarterback had a man wide open, but he is decides to take it himself. And it's a touchdown anyway. Martel Green into the end zone. Ohio takes a four-point lead with 52 seconds on the clock. So the defense, which has been so good all game long, collapses here at the end of the fourth quarter. We'll take a touchback on that kick. And we're going to have 52 seconds, but all three of our timeouts to go down and score a touchdown. And we need to score a touchdown. Trying to wait, throwing it up for Wilson, and that's game. Ball is just not thrown in the right spot. I have to let him score. It's the only chance we give up the pick six. Uh, otherwise, we just won't get the ball back. Other decisions, other issues in this game maybe haven't been my fault. That one is, I think, has to be on me. Just can't make that risky of a throw in that situation. Unfortunately, now we are almost required to make throws that risky. 42 seconds. Down two scores. An onside kick recovered. Could get us back in this, but you never know. And oh my gosh, that one should have been picked off as well. The offense just has not looked good this half. It's been a real struggle. Maybe I... Uh, Shouldn't have uh, kicked that field goal the last time that we were in the red zone. Maybe I should have gone for it. Well, it's third and ten. We're going to go back to the play that we gave up the touchdown on and or the, the pick six on and hope for the best. Outside the pocket, right bumper is open. Curtis comes down. No, he drops it. Oh, that hurts. That hurts a lot. Well, this game, man. Well, it seemed like we were feeling pretty confident about this game for a long time, but... Now, I think it's pretty much over. Trying to get it. Curtis does hold on to this one. Guess we're not dead yet. Try to do what we can with these 24 seconds. Snap the ball as quick as possible. And 
Heave one up towards the end zone. We'll see if Mitchell can get under it. No. These balls are just uh, way too underthrown for our guys right now. Additionally, it definitely seems like all our receivers are really, really short this season. So that certainly doesn't help. 17 seconds left. Going to continue to just heave Hail Marys downfield. This one again underthrown, and we're lucky that that one isn't picked off. Late game situations like this are where it really is clear that Albert Johnson is just not a great quarterback. Uh, really struggles to make passes like that. Eight seconds left. We take a huge sack. It's fourth and 17. And shy of one of the greatest miracles in college football history. I think that might be it for this game. We'll try to heave a Hail Mary deep and see if anything can happen. But this one's intercepted. Again, the ball just completely underthrown. And with one second on the clock, Ohio's going to get to come out and take a knee. And there's the knee. What a disappointing loss. Especially after we start the season with a win against Michigan State. We fought Purdue relatively close. I figured we would come in here and take care of business, but the Bobcats had uh, other feelings about that one. Three interceptions for Aaron Sanders. I feel like a couple of those are, uh, you know, don't really count, but just couldn't get it done at the end. We had, again, streaks of brilliance, but not enough to complete a whole game and the defense couldn't keep these guys out of the end zone when it mattered so 28 17 is the final score and we will start this season one and two so again a disappointing loss at least the offense can kind of move the ball on uh, that second half but it wasn't enough and you know now that i think about it i don't know if we needed to give them the touchdown on that interception uh if we get the tackle far enough back, uh, they might have been in field goal range, but we did have all three of our timeouts. If we got a quick three and out, we could have stopped them and held them uh, just to a seven point lead. But again, that would have then required us to drive down the field with no timeouts and barely any time on the clock. So uh, maybe it would have been the better decision not to give up the points. But at the end of the day, I don't think it changed the result of the game. And it's my opinion that when you are losing late in a football game, it's always best to have the football in your team's hands. Uh, you can control a lot more that way. Unfortunately for us, Albert, not that great of a quarterback. Hard to make uh, a big comeback when you can't throw it deep. Durham Finch Jr., our uh, offensive player of the game, 16 carries for 155 yards and a nice long touchdown. And Corey Poole, the corner, with two tackles, but more importantly, two interceptions. A uh, pretty solid game from the defense, all things considered. They just struggled a little bit when they were on the field for so long there at the end of the game. So one and two. We have the Bobcats, their first win, and now we have matching records. And we are now 0-1 in conference play. Certainly starting this season on the back foot. Going to take a lot of work just to get bowl eligible at this point. I've got confidence we'll pull out wins. The question is, will it be enough of them? We can go ahead and advance towards our next week where we'll play Miami. Uh, we get them at home, so maybe that's enough for us. Well, I guess we have one positive. Uh, about half a million recruits are ready to visit, and a lot of them are very good, so we'll be able to get that scheduled uh, for our next game or, or for a game down the line, and, well, things look okay. Miami is 0 of 3. Uh, certainly we can't lose to them as well. They are the higher overall team. But once again, we're favored to win. You just never know these days, though, how that's going to turn out. Take a quick look here at the top 25 and what happened around the country. Georgia beat Old Miss to stay undefeated. And at the top, Penn State wins in overtime against the Ducks. Any other big ranked matchups? Oklahoma lost to Army. 24 to 21 so uh we know that they played ohio really close and i guess they flew a little bit too close to the sun they lose to the black knights there there's oregon with their loss uh oklahoma state lost to tcu and dropping out is tennessee curious to see uh you know what our conference can do in terms of rankings as this season progresses unfortunately that is gonna have to do it for this episode if you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit like, heck, even hit dislike if you thought that maybe the 
the game management was a little bit bad from my side of things. And then in the comments, again, I want to know what you guys would have done uh, on that fourth and goal. Do you kick the field goal or do you go for it? I, I stand by kicking that field goal. There's a long ways to try to convert. Uh, but had we scored a touchdown there, we probably at least go to overtime, if not win the game outright. After you've done that, though, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, where again, once we hit 200 followers there, we'll do a t-shirt giveaway, one-of-a-kind Goonmaster shirt. I own the only other one in existence. I really want to give this t-shirt away, but you guys got to follow me on Twitter. There's also a link to our community Discord uh, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night, or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.